You can create custom looks inside SpeedGrade and then apply them to clips in SpeedGrade or inside Premiere Pro. To see how to do that, start up SpeedGrade, click on Open Project, go to Working Files, Premiere Pro Projects, and go on down here to SG Custom Looks, and click on Open. We'll start off by changing the look for this coastline shot and then saving that and applying it to another coastline shot. Now the look that I'm going to create here is probably a little bit beyond what you would call a standard look, but I want to make sure you can see it, make sure you can see the differences. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the shadows a bit here, and I want to lift up the highlights a little bit, darken things up a bit, make them a little bit richer. Now I want to warm up the highlights, warm up the midtones like that, and then cool off the shadow. It's kind of a standard film approach here. This is not an unusual way to do things, to get the highlights and the midtones warm and then bring down the shadows. So that's a look that we've created that we want to apply to other coastline shots, for example. So now I want to save that look, and saving it is easy with the one little issue of making sure you save it to a place where you want to save it. Now don't do this yet, but to save it, you just click on this little button down here and you're done. You have no options in terms of where you want to save it. You've got to set that up in advance. And the normal way to do that is to go to the Look Management tab by clicking on this little button over there, and then finding the folder you want to put this in. I'll scroll down here a bit to where we see all the Look folders. We could put it in the Look Examples folder, which is basically empty, or we could take these other subfolders here and put it in there. But I don't want to put a look in there when it's really something that was set up in advance. I want to create my own custom folder. So here's one way to do that. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go to my working files, and I'm going to back up to where SpeedGrade is stored. My main drive, program files, Adobe. And this process will be a little bit different on the Mac, but once you get down to the Adobe SpeedGrade folder there, open that up, and here are the Look Examples. I'm going to add a new folder. Now in Windows, I just right click and I go New Folder. It'll be a little bit different on a Mac, but my guess is you know how to do this. I'm going to type in Custom. That should be sufficient here. All right, now I'm going to close this down and go back to SpeedGrade. And I want to see that folder, so I just click on this little rewind button there and we'll go down a bit. And there's our custom folder. So I just select that folder now. And now that that folder is selected, when I click on this button, it automatically adds that look right there. And it gives it a really long name. So I'm going to just delete that and type in coastline. And that's the look for our coastline shots. Now, if you happen to have saved the look into a folder in which you didn't wish to place it, it's very easy to resolve that. For example, let's click on desaturation to go to a different folder and click on the save look button down here. That adds the look to this group here. But we can get rid of that very easily. Just click on it to select it like so. Go down to the lower right hand corner and click on that little garbage can there and then confirm the deletion of that look, just like that. Let's go back to the custom folder here. Now I'm going to go to the next coastline shot here, and I'm going to click on this, and there's our look applied to that coastline shot. Simple as that. Now I'll go back to Premiere Pro here in a bit and show you how to apply it there. All right, let's move on down the line here to this shot of the citrus fruit here inside this produce stand. I want to create a look here by customizing an existing look. So I want to go to the cinematic looks here. I kind of like the cinematic one look. I'm going to click on that, and that adds this LUT a lot is this kind of de facto LUT here that we see a lot. If I click on the LUT there, it's this Cinespace 2383 LUT. We also desaturated the primary layer just a bit there. That's how that look is created. I'm going to go back to the primary layer here. I'm going to close this down so I can see more of it. And I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to pull down the shadows a bit again. Lift up the highlights again like that. Adjust the gamma here. And we're growing a little bit extreme again, but I want to make sure you can see things. And here I've dropped the saturation, but now I'm going to up the ante by going over here and lifting it up a bit, making it more saturated at that end of the game. And that's kind of an extreme look, but I want to make sure that you can see we've made a difference and also customized an existing look. And if I go down to this little button here and click there, it's going to save it inside the cinematic folder. So I need to go back to my custom folder. So I go back over here, click on that, click on my custom folder, and now I click on this, and it adds that new guy right there. I can highlight it again and change the name to something else. Highlight that. And I'll call this Produce. And now we'll go back to the second Produce shot here like that. And I'll just apply that look by clicking on it. And that's that look we just created. All right, now we've got three shots here at the end. They're all shot at the same place. And this is going to simulate working with other cameras. If you work with multiple cameras in a single shoot, and those cameras are different makes and models, the best workflow is to apply camera patches that match the makes and models of the cameras so you get a neutral clip, a virtual log as they call it, and then apply your effects to that. And so if you're going to do that, you can't have that camera patch be part of the look because you'll use different camera patches depending on the camera that you use to shoot the clip. 
but we're going to set it up by applying a camera patch to the clip on the bottom here and then create a look on the adjustment layer above it and save that look. So the first order of business is to apply a camera patch to this clip on the bottom. And since this is a standard HD camera, we're going to go over here to the little plus sign there, click on that, click on let, close this down so you can see it, and go get the camera patch for this camera, which is a standard HD camera. So we go on down here and get Rec 709. And that's a virtual log clip there with a limited dynamic range and lower saturation. Now we've got that camera patch applied, so I now want to create my look. And I don't want to have the camera patch be part of that look, so I'm going to go to the adjustment layer here above that clip. I want to start that process by using a Cine look as a starting point. I'm going to go down here and click on the plus sign there, go to LUT, and track down a Cine look here. We'll go get the blue one. I like blue and tense like that. And now we're going to customize that, so I'm going to click on primary here. The LUT limits our range here, so I'm going to take the primary layer and put it above the LUT. We can have a full dynamic range here. Now I'm going to bring down the blacks, lift up the highlights, and I like the blues here, so I'm going to add some more blue in the highlights, more blues in the midtones, kind of make the shadows warmer here, kind of the opposite of the other cinematic effect like that. And now we've changed the tonality a bit, so I'm going to bring down the shadows again just a bit more like that. And I think we need to bring down the highlights just a little bit now to compensate for the changes in the chroma, which affected the luma. All right, so now we've created a new look and it's on the adjustment layer here. And so I'm gonna go on down here and add that. But before I do, I wanna make sure I go to the right folder. So I go over here, click on that. I change my folder to custom. Now I click on this little guy there. And there's our new look. Highlight the name and we'll call this one women. All right, now I wanna apply this look to the other clips, but I need to do it in concert with the camera patch. So I'm going to put it on the adjustment layer here first so you can see it without the camera patch. Then I'll add the camera patch. So go over here and click on that. And we'll put it on the adjustment layer by clicking on that. Go to the next one there. And they're too extreme, right? But if I go back to this one and apply the camera patch to it, which is the way you should do it, click on this and go to LUT. And go track down the camera patch here by going over here, getting the Rec. 709 camera patch. There you go. That one, and you see that's more like a good look now instead of something that was really extreme. This one over here, do the same routine. Click on you, go to LUT, and get that same Rec. 709 camera patch. And this is the way you make a look where you're working with a camera patch. All right, so now you can see how to create looks here inside SpeedGrade and how to apply them to clips in SpeedGrade. But let's see how that works inside Premiere Pro. I'm going to shut down SpeedGrade. And I'm going to say, no, I don't want to save this because I want to keep the original file intact. Now I'm going to start up that file inside Premiere Pro. So I'm going to go to Working Files, Premiere Pro Projects, and open up SG Custom Looks like that inside Premiere Pro. All right, we're going to start with the two coast shots there. I'll select both of them by just highlighting those two guys like that. I'll go over to Effects, View Effects, Color Correction, and double click on Lumetri. And that applies to both of those guys. And now I need to track down the look for each one of those things one at a time. So I go to my main drive here and I go to Program Files, and Adobe, and SpeedGrade CC, and Look Examples, and Custom. And there are the three looks we created. So I'll just double click on Coastline, that adds it to the first clip. Double click again, that adds it to the second clip. Now there is that one look we created being applied to two different clips. Pretty easy. I can go back to SpeedGrade inside this project and adjust those looks if I want to. Down to this next shot here, the Produce Stand. I want to apply the same looks to those two clips. I'll select those two clips. I'll double click on Lumetri for them. That's the same thing. It opens up this select the look thing. Now we're already there. So I just double click on produce once. That's the first clip. Again, that's the second clip. There you go. We've applied that look to those two clips there. Now, finally, this is a little bit more complex because we need to apply a camera patch to the bottom one and then the look on the top. So we'll select these three clips in the bottom like so. We want to apply the same camera patch since they're all shot by the same camera. So I double click on Lumetri again. So I need to back up a little bit here. So I'm going to go back to speed grade. And I want to go to Lumetri now. I want to go to the LUTs. I'm scrolling down here to the Rec. 709 LUT. Not the look, but the LUT. I don't want to apply a primary layer to this. So I double click on this LUT there once. I'll need to do it again for the second clip. I'll need to do it again for the third clip. Now you see that we applied that LUT, and now I want to apply the same look above that V log clip now to the three clips on top, the three adjustment layers. So I select all of them, double click on the metry to add that effect to all three of them. Now I need to select the look one at a time. So I go back to speed grid here, go to look examples, 
go to my custom looks and double click and limit once, twice, three times. Now it's been applied to all three of those clips, like so. So creating and saving custom looks inside SpeedGrade is a fairly straightforward process. And then applying those looks to clips in SpeedGrade and Premiere Pro is very easy.